Hey, what's going on guys? This is Big Brace channel, your go-to place where we explore all things programming. My name is Amir and in this video I'm going to show you some of the best Visual Studio Code extensions. And before we start the video, please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit notification bell if it's not already done. With that being said, let's go ahead and start exploring the best Visual Studio Code extensions out there. So you can see here that I have a lot of projects that I've just uh, cloned from my GitHub repo. Some of them there you can see here that's Trust. This is Python. Uh, we have different files that's uh, JavaScript. You know, uh, again, Python, HTML, CSS and so on. So the first extension we got is Live Server. And you can see that I have already installed Live Server. That's an extension that's basically one of my favorite ones. Live Server launches a local development server with a live reload feature both for static and dynamic pages. And let me show you on index.html. So before what you would do is to just double click on the index.html file in your current folder. But if you will take a look below here, you'll find port 5500 click to close the server if you will click here that's uh, already activated you can click go live and boom another way to do that is control l alt o if you love shortcuts or simply you can hit right click and click on open with live server it will do the same thing it has hot reloader or auto reloader so let me just show you if i will click here Let's do here, for example, let's change that name instead of DVs. Let's do converter. And notice when I will hit Control S, the name has changed immediately. That's not only applied on HTML, but also CSS. So uh, that's obviously I'm using Bootstrap. Um, so take a look if I will uh, just delete all of that and I will do Control S, all of the styling has disappeared return that back, control S, and again, reappeared. The second extension is remote SSH. If you will take a look here below, that's a remote window. If you will click it, you can connect to Windows subsystem Linux using a specific distro and so on. So if you will take a look to remote SSH, that's an extension that basically lets you use any remote machine with an SSH server as your current development environment. So that basically makes it much easier to develop and or troubleshoot in a wide variety of scenarios. And what you will do remotely will be exactly the same thing as if you will do that on your current machine. The second extension we have is Prettier. Prettier is just a code formatter for Visual Studio Code and it's a very opinionated code formatter, right? Uh, it enforces a consistent style by parsing your code and reprinting it with its own rules. But the good thing about it is that it takes the maximum line length into account and it traps the code whenever necessary. All these line formatting is done by a prettier. And you can set it up so it formats your code every time you save it, by the way. So um, you can do npm install prettier uh, with the development flag here. If you want to just install Prettier in your project. All right, so that's Prettier and I highly recommend it. You can see here that it has 31 million downloads. The next extension that we have is GitHub Copilot. Some would call the GitHub Copilot a revolution in computer programming. Um, I don't like it personally. I don't use AI generated code. Others would call it a useful tool. So it's true that it can save you a lot of time. So whatever you think of it, the autocomplete AI is worth integrated in, into your workflow, I believe. Um, don't take me as an example, because again, I'm against that. But if you're on tight schedule, for example, for um, in, in your company, uh, you want to do production as quick as possible, you can consider working with GitHub Copilot. And by the way, that's trained on GPT-3, right? So um, it gives code suggestions, autocomplete codes, can do try and you see this suggestions immediately you know in gray and if you will wait two three seconds it will be uh, considered as auto approval so yeah again something that i don't use but uh you might find it hot and yeah by all means go and install it 
the next extension that we have is auto rename tag and auto rename tag i personally don't have it but i think i will install it so if we'll install that basically what it does it automatically renames the paired html xml tags um same as visual studio id does all right so that's sponsored by tab 9 and other companies all right so you can see here in the demo when you're writing something in the beginning of um, the tag it adds it at the closing tag and the opposite if you will just type something in the closing tag it will open it or it will add it to the opening tag all right so let's go ahead and try that actually let's go to index.html uh, let's do like that let's do div just simply div all right so that's working perfectly so let's do div but if i will add a class all right that's fine if instead of div i want to change that to p paragraph so yeah it has changed it to p so if i will go to this div and i will hit p it has changed it to paragraph as well Control z to undo all right so that's a very good extension that will um, increase the productivity i believe the next extension that we have is git lens and git lens is one of my favorite extensions it supercharges the Git capabilities of VS Code, basically. It's a powerful extension that allows you to see who, why, and how lines of code have changed over time. You see that, Amir Beckett, three years ago, initial commit. You'll find here a lot of, um, a lot of choices. So if I will click on open details, it will open what we call the source control. That's the commit details. So if you will click here, Let's say, for instance, that uh, we had some lines that have changed. You see the contrast between both files. Boots, bootstrap, nothing, of course. Index HTML, nothing, of course. Nothing has been changed and committed, right? And if we will uh, get back here, let's just, let's go to other file. And let's see, for example, you can connect directly to GitHub. You can show the team actions if you want. Um, you can do like this, for example, to return back to uh, if there are any committed changes that have been done. And if you will hover over here, for example, that's a new commit and you can see the changes here, right? So these are the commits. So we'll click here, three files added. So open in commit graph. So that's initial commit, update the code, then update cargo.toml. So that's a Python file, fast API and JOT authentication. It was updated by this user, um, Alan Nuzio, right? Uh, updated, then I've approved uh, merging the pull request, right? So it's really cool and it shows you everything if you're working with system controls with GitHub. Uh, this is very useful, especially if you're working in Teams because it shows you basically who did what. So I highly recommend to install the GitLens extension. And if you're interested more about the Git history, there is an extension called Git history. So that's similar to GitLens. Um, it's a Visual Studio Code extension that um, gives a visual of the Git log. But if you have GitLens installed already, I don't think that you'll need Git history. The next extension that I don't have is CSS Peak. This extension is very valuable for the front end developers. It allows you to extend your HTML and EGS file to show CSS, SCSS and less code within the source code. So let's go ahead and install that and check out index.html file. Let's go here. All right, cool. So let's check out, for example, this div with class container. If I will hover over, all right, nothing. If I will hit on control and click on container, oh, that's pretty cool. This shows exactly, that's what it does. It gives you a peek of your CSS file based on the class or the ID that you want to choose. The next extension that we have, and I don't have it installed, is Peacock. And that's a cute one, actually. I heard a lot about it. It allows you to change 
the color of your VS Code workspace, ideal when you have multiple VS Code instances, that's true. So um, let's go ahead and install that. Let's see. All right, that's installed already. How to use it is we can hit F1 and we can type Peacock and we can just uh, change to favorite color. So you can see the colors change based on your choice. So we can have, that's a yellow color for this instance. So let's do, that's node green. That's not bad. Just script yellow. <laughs> Svelte orange, view green, right? So these are the colors that they have. Angular red, azure blue, JavaScript yellow, Mandalorian blue, uh, no green. So let's keep it for JavaScript yellow. Let's now open a new instance. So I will do control shift N. So I've opened another project in a new instance, hit F1, Peacock change favorite color. And now we got different you know, different uh, color for that instance. And that's pretty useful because you can quickly identify which instance you switch to. So if you're working on that VS Code instance and you have another instance open, um, so you won't get, you know, confused between both instances. So that's a pretty cool one. And uh, yeah, I, I can say that it's very useful and I don't regret that I've installed it. The next extension that we have is Colorize. And colorize extension, basically, um, it colorizes your colors here, right? And that's a good one, by the way. Let's go ahead and install it. All right, great. Let's open a project where we have, uh, I don't have SAS or SCSS, but yeah, you can see that immediately uh, everything has been applied and the colors are shown with all of those hexadecimal colors. It's pretty cool. Um, I think I will leave it. You see all this color palettes looks very beautiful. And that's pretty amazing. Actually, um, it makes it very easy for you to see at a glance which color you're using. The next extension that we have is code spell checker. I don't have this one installed, but that's a basic spell checker that works with code and documents, not only with code. So if you have a markdown file or txt file, it will also work. But let's say for instance, this is my channel like that and if you will hover over channel unknown word view problem you can do quick fix and you will have here uh, words that su are suggested to you so channel like that um, and I love to drink coffee with one e for example also quick fix do coffee so you see, that's a, that's a spell checker. And I think it's very useful if you write a lot of documentation. The next extension we have is Debugger for Chrome. So Debugger for Chrome is developed by Microsoft. Um, it says here, debug your JavaScript code running in Google Chrome for VS Code. I'm not personally going to use it, um, but you can go ahead and try to install it and tell me in the comments below. So here what it says, a VS Code extension to debug your JavaScript code in the Google Chrome browser. Okay, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to install it. Let's go to Google Chrome. Let me open my DevTools by just uh, hitting Control Shift C. So what do we have? We have the elements, that's okay. We have that already. Console, sources, network, performance, memory, application. So for example, and that's a pretty interesting thing that I might show you in JavaScript, for example, if you will do, um, let's say for example, uh, that 35 is a number, right? So if you will take 35 and you want to do to string, you will get an error. But if you will do const num equal to 35, that's okay, num now is 35. Now, if you will take num and want to convert it to string, it will work. That's one of those uh, weird things in JavaScript. So you can you can do your own development here, but um, I don't think that it's useful. For me, at least, maybe it is for you. The next one we have is icon fonts. So icon fonts uh, gives you, that's, you know, snippets for a variety of icon fonts. 
says here this package is also available for Atom and Sublime Text. So Icon Fonts basically offers snippets for a variety of icon fonts, um, including the popular font Awesome version 5 icon pack. And of course, if you're not using VS Code, you can install it in Atom and Sublime Text. So let's install that and let's let me check it out. So let me put an icon before the name the V's here. So I will do I with, um, I'll do class is equal to FA, FA check. Save that and it's showing here. Let's just put it here between the name and the exchange rate converter. All right, so that's a pretty useful one. And I don't regret that I have installed it and I think I will keep it. And VS Code icons, I don't know, you, you wouldn't think icons make a big difference, right? But they really do, um, at least for me. This extension, and you can see that I already have it, um, this adds a splash of colors and cute little icons to your IDE and um, can show you here. You can see these icons here, right? E even for the folder. So components, you can find that uh, folder with, with a gem here. Um, if you will add a folder called templates, you can find here that it's not a yellow folder, but with, um, with this window, you know, public, with this um, public with people um, shared here. Let me just zoom. A source, markdown, that's a good one. Git, uh, npm even for the, the packages, for testing that you can find that uh, there is a testing tube here. So SFG even, you know, has this SFG icon. It's pretty cool. Um, I like that personally. It, it adds more flair to the code and, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, I find. All right, guys, so that wraps up our walkthrough. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave a like. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay safe and be well. See you later, guys.